plenty of videos on YouTube that talk about, you know, oh, you should be an owner-operator, oh, you know, I'm making this much money, you know, things are, are, are all peachy, when the reality is there's a lot of things that could go wrong, and there are inevitably going to be times that are going to be just full of trials and tribulations. I'm going to talk about those trials and tribulations in this video and maybe give you a reality check of what it's like to actually be an owner-operator. So I'm going to tell you basically what's been happening to me over the past three weeks. And this story is what puts owner-operators out of business. You know, it will, you know, if an engine blows, does that put a lot of owner-operators out of business? Yeah, absolutely. But this story is more like the snake in the grass that sneaks up on you. And these are the stories that you never hear about, that people don't talk about, that people aren't prepared for. This one could have easily put me out of business. Easily. I mean, we're talking about over $10,000 lost. And uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And it could have been a lot worse. So let's get into it. So a few weeks ago, I was driving home and I had a check engine light come on. I'm not going to go into the full details of the story because I have covered this on the channel before. I'll link that. I'll link that right up here if you're curious. Well, the check engine light came on. I'll give you the short version to catch you up. The check engine light came on, and it's a code that popped up that I've dealt with before. You know, I dealt with it, I don't know, about a year, year and a half ago, something like that. And it turned out to be nothing. Uh, does, you know, do mechanical issues just fix themselves? No, it was probably just a false positive. You know, that stuff happens. Sensors, you know, maybe a connection to the sensor, or, you know, maybe in this case, something got in the, uh, the relief valve, something small, clogged it up for a second, and uh, it wound up clearing, it, clearing itself out. But the point of, the point is that I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I got home, got into the shop, turned out it was. It was a much bigger deal than what I thought it was, or at least it could have been. There were a few different things that it could have been. Well, we wound up doing something small. The check engine light went away, so I thought it was good. And I ran the, the truck a little bit. Everything was fine. I went and picked up a load. And at this point in time, I'm pulling a, a drive-in for Landstar, thankfully. So I went and picked up this load. It was fairly heavy. And I got over to... I got over to this bridge, pretty steep bridge. And as I was climbing that bridge, the uh, check engine light came back on. And that's kind of when I knew that something serious was happening. I needed to get it fixed immediately. So I called up Landstar. We went to repower the load. That took a few days. <laughs> and then I called uh, my mechanics over in Georgia. Those are the guys that I go to when I have a serious problem, when I definitely need it fixed, uh, when I'm unsure of what the problem is, because they take care of you. They do a good job. They don't overcharge you. It's like family. You know, when you go over there, it's like family. They, they take care of you like you are family. I've seen it with so many other people that, you know, it's their first time at the shop. They take care of it and they stand behind their word. Anyway, that's enough plugging Haggai Automotive. Uh, but that's truly how I feel about it. Anyway, 
called them up and they said, come on over. We'll try to work you in when we can. Well, between repowering the load and actually getting the work done, it was an entire week. And uh, it turned out to be the fuel pump head. That's $1,300 brand new. You can do the math. Just call it about two grand. Don't forget, that's about a 900 mile deadhead, so you also got to add in the fuel, but we won't go into all the details. Two grand's fine. But I've also been down a week. Now, to me, I make $6,000 a week, roughly. Now, here's the first reality check. When you hear that I make $6,000 a week, your brain tells you, wow, 6,000 times, we'll call it 50, that's $300,000 a year. Your brain tells you that I make $300,000 a year, and that's that, that couldn't be farther from the truth. I don't make that. I have expenses, I have bills, taxes, all of these other things, maintenance, kind of the obvious one. So when I say that I make $6,000 a week, in essence, I bring home to 2,500, something like that. I'm gonna work with whole numbers here just to make life easy. So let's just say I make $2,000 a week. So when I work a week, I make $2,000. Converse, the inverse of that, is when I don't work, it costs me $6,000. There's $4,000 of bills and there's $2,000 that I'm not making. So do you see the swing? Just because I make $6,000 a week doesn't mean I make six grand. it means that I make two. But when I don't work, it costs me six. We're just going to use the 4000 because I said that 2000 you know, it basically costs me more to operate. So I just don't make any money that week. Let's say it costs me four. So that week costs me four. Another $2,000 at the shop. And so now we're back at six. Well, it was a weekend. We got finished late Friday. It's over in the Atlanta market. The only thing I could find out of there on the weekend was picking up Sunday and it was going over to Reno. I was paying decent. I'm not going to say it was paying great, but it was also a light load so I could save some money there. And ultimately, I felt like I had all week to look for a load. I'd be able to find something coming out. So I thought I'd be in all right shape. But whenever I went to go load over there, it took them well over six hours to get me loaded. Oh. Well, when it took that long, basically I lost that whole day. Not quite the whole day, but I lost a day. It pushed my delivery back a day. So essentially, that's like losing a day. When you have to push the delivery back, that's losing a day. Now I make about $1,000 a day when I'm working. I try to work six days a week. There's my six grand. There's gonna be better days, there's gonna be or better weeks, there's gonna be worse weeks. One week I might make eight, next week I might make four. You never know. But it averages out to about six. So I lost my thousand dollars there for that pushing that, that delivery back one day. So now we're up to seven thousand. The rest of the trip kind of went up, went off without a hitch. And as I'm delivering the load, another load popped up. Yes, it took that long to find a load. And I got extremely lucky. It was a load that was picking up at the same place that I was delivering, and it was going back to the house. So I thought that was great. You know, I'll be able to go home, do a 34 at the house, come back out, we'll be good to go. Work hard for the next few weeks, catch back up. Well, I was watching the weather, as I always do, and this was the time that that winter storm Uri was going to decimate basically the United States, and specifically Texas, for me. 
that's what affected me. So rather than going straight to the house, because if I pushed it, I could run recaps and I could actually get there a day early. Now I would have spent two days at the house. But that's not how I figure things out. If I have to push it, I don't really consider that extra day. That extra day would have been a bonus day. But I know that I would have gotten to 34 at the house. So I can certainly count on that. Well, <laughs> because, of, because of the winter storm, it was a smarter idea for me to just stop, take a 34, that way I didn't have to deal with all the ice and everything. It gets really nasty in West Texas. Yeah, I was giving up my day at the house, but it was a much safer, much smarter plan. So now I'm down 7,000 and a day at the house, which is fine. It's part of being an owner operator. But by the way, don't mistake this video for me whining and complaining. That's not what I'm doing. The purpose of this video is to show you the realities of being an owner operator. Everybody thinks it's all sunshine and rainbows. There's all there's a bunch of videos out there talking about how much money I made. I made ten thousand on this load. I made ten thousand this week. You gotta understand that sure those weeks happen. But those aren't happening every single week. There are ups and downs, and sometimes there are massive downs. There are massive chains of events that happen that put people out of business. So if you're enjoying the realities that I bring and that I show you, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Back to the story. So, down seven, down a day at the house. Well, as I'm coming across, this winter storm wrecked everything even worse than what everybody thought. So one day I only drove 300 miles, the next day I only made it 200 miles. Well, 500 miles in two days, that's, that's losing a day, especially on a long trip. So there's another day. So now we're up to 8,000. Well, I got very lucky with my timing of making it, making it across Texas, actually. Uh, I wound up, there was another storm that was coming behind Winter Storm Uri that was going to hit Texas again. It was gonna basically shut everything down again. But I knew that if I got to the other side of San Antonio that I would be in good shape, which I did. So I got lucky there. So, I've still got a, a couple hundred miles left to drive. I drive over to the delivery. I get there, I'm happy, you know? I, I made it in between those storms and I'm seeing a, a glimmer, you know, a glimmer of hope. So I get to the delivery and, you know, there's a couple trucks in front of me and one of them's parked underneath the crane. I start looking at loads. I saw a load out that was going to Mississippi, and then I saw another load back that was loading up out of Alabama and headed over to San Antonio. And that was a perfect little turn because I could make some good money through the weekend. One going over to Mississippi was 1400 bucks. One coming back was three. And not only that, I'd be close to the house so I could sneak over, get at least one night in the house, uh, you know, and make up for the, the day that I missed the week before. Well, I'm getting there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting at the job site. Well, there's a problem with the crane. They tell me that they call the mechanic out, he'll be here in half an hour, he's going to fix it, he thinks he knows the problem. They'll get us out of here. All right, well, we're starting to push it now for me to get to the next load to pick it up, to get over to Mississippi. Well, turns out the winter storm froze a valve on the crane and broke it. And then the mechanic that came out wound up breaking the crane worse than it was already broken. <laughs> I'm sure it's rough to be a mechanic sometimes. Well, they had to bring out another crane. That crane showed up. They got us unloaded. But I didn't get 
out of there until about 6.30. Obviously, the first load canceled. Now, I barely got out of there in enough time to put down enough miles so today I could deadhead all the way to Alabama to pick up this load to get back to San Antonio. Now, could I have canceled this load? Sure. I could have. But one, this is a great load. I didn't want to ruin the relationship that I have with this agent and not be able to run this load again. I ran it before, so I'm sure he would understand. But at the same time, if I say I'm going to do something, I try to do it. And then on top of that, it's getting me back to the house. It's paying really good going through the weekend. So I decided to suck it up and deadhead. But I lost a day. So I lost another day, but really it was that $1,400 load. So I'm not, you don't add the two together. So, you know, that's like losing, that's like losing $1,400 more dollars. So $1,400 more gone. So what are we at? 84, I think. No. 94. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll add this up afterwards. So losing the other day in New Mexico slash Texas, that was another thousand. We were at seven. So now we're at eight. And then losing this load is another 14. So now we're at 94 plus fuel to get over here. So adding up all the idling that I'm doing, the fuel to get over here, I think it's pretty safe to say that I've lost 10 grand in the last few weeks. Now what I didn't tell you is obviously I didn't get a paycheck for the first week for being down. That's pretty obvious, right? But what I didn't tell you is that that load that was going out to Reno, when it got pushed back a day, it got pushed back one day beyond the cutoff for what I get paid. So between the week being down, pushing back the extra week, not getting paid on that Reno load. I'm without a paycheck for three weeks. So I'm down 10 grand and no paycheck for three weeks. That's a huge hit. Huge hit. That hit puts a lot of owner operators out of business. The ones that operate from week to week. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh, I'm, I'm the greatest and I'm the, I'm the best owner-operator out here and I've got, my, I've got everything together so well that it, it just didn't even phase me. Because it did. Definitely phased me. Big time. You know, my, my bills are higher than a draft says. I have to make a lot of money in order to cover all of my bills. Now, is that anybody else's fault? No, I'll own up to that. It's my fault. But it's the reality. The reality is I have to make a lot of money. I have to work a lot. And going three weeks without a paycheck is detrimental. It hurts. The thing is, that breakdown that I had could have easily, easily been $10,000. Easily. Could have been. had to have replaced the entire fuel pump and a few injectors. Easily 10 grand. So if it could have been 10 grand, I got out of there for, we'll call it a two, that's another $8,000. 10 and eight's $18,000. So I could have easily been $18,000 in the hole and without a paycheck for three weeks. It's not a lot 
lot of people that'll survive that. I just want to tell you the chain of events that happened, how things can add up, small things here and there, weather, things out of our control, what actually needed to be replaced with the truck, how long it took to get loaded, when my paycheck cutoff what day is. All these little things added up and could have easily put an owner operator out of business. And this stuff happens every single day. And this little snake in the grass chain link of events, chain of events, chain link. This chain of events is the type of story that puts an owner operator out of business that you never hear about. Because there's not a lot of fireworks. There's nothing crazy that happened. There's nothing out of the ordinary. This is just trucking. This is what it's like to be an owner operator. This is the side of being an owner operator that people don't talk about. It's hard to find videos like these on YouTube, but whenever I take, or whenever I can make a video like this, when I can take this opportunity to show you guys how it can be that it's not all about making a bunch of money, it's not all about upgrading the, you know, upgrading the truck, it's not all the glitz and glamour of being an owner-operator, there's another side to this. So when you're wanting to get into this business, when you're wanting to chase your dream of financial freedom, it can happen. It can absolutely happen. There are many success stories in trucking. Is it as good as it used to be? Maybe not. It's different than what it used to be. So you can't compare it to how it used to be. All you can do is, is create a plan and put that plan into motion. When that plan kicks back, knocks you in the mouth, and knocks you down, you can either stay down and quit, or you can pick yourself up, dust yourself off, make another plan, and attack it again. There's a lot of people that watch my channel waiting for the train wreck to happen. But I keep coming back, baby. So take this story, Think about, do you want to be an owner-operator? Are you prepared for a hit like this? Can you make it through? Is there a path that allows you to continue down the road? If you can answer yes to that question, then you might be ready. But understand that you're not going to run down to Joe's truck sales at the corner spend all your money on a down payment and then come out of here and be an ex a successful owner operator. It's not going to happen. There's more. There's way more to this. So if you're going to do it, do it right. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Please subscribe. I make videos about being an owner operator. I make teaching videos on this channel. I have a vlog channel as well. I'll link that at the end of the video. Check out one of these other videos right over here. YouTube does a great job of recommending something you might be interested in. I appreciate each and every one of you, but as always, stay driven.